There's still one bullet left in this Derringer, and I'll take you back whether you're alive or dead. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of the man called Paladin. Oh, Mr. Paladin. Well, good morning, hey boy. Morning, sir. A uh, telegram come for you. Oh, thank you. Uh, say, how'd you get that bump on your head? Bump? Oh, oh, a uh, Mr. Wong hit hey boy with broom handle. By accident? No, sir, by purpose. <laughs> Why? Oh, big mistake, Mr. Paladin. Very big mistake. Miss Wong see hey boy kiss pretty Chinese girl. Oh, <laughs> yes, I'd say hey boy, that was a mistake. Oh, no, you no understand. Miss Wong no understand. Pretty Chinese girl was Hey Boy's cousin. She going on trip. Hey Boy was kissing her goodbye. Well, why didn't you explain that to Miss Wong? Oh, that impossible. She too angry. <laughs> Maybe you can explain to her, Miss Paladin. <laughs> uh, she listen to you. All right, Hey Boy. I'll see what I can do. Oh, thank you. And uh, uh, you wish to send answer to Telegram? Well, just a moment. We'll see. Your presence is required at the Demolan Ranch. The sum of $1,000 has been deposited in your account to ensure your prompt arrival. An additional $1,000 will be deposited on the completion of your services. Signed, the Comtesse Marie de Moulin. Comtesse Marie de... De de who? De Moulin. She's the owner of the largest cattle ranch in Oregon, hey, boys. An empire in itself. And ruled as such by one of the most colorful women this frontier has ever known, the Comtesse. Oh, you take a trip, huh? For $2,000? Yes, hey boy. I take trip. Higginbotham here. We will now commence our lesson in stereophonic reproduction. <clears throat> Listen to the call of the spotted bill snicker on ordinary stereo. Now then, on a Columbia Stereo One phonograph. <coughs> Obvious difference, what? The Columbia Stereophonic System really causes all others to blush, for it is not composed of just a few separated speakers. Columbia is the originator and exclusive purveyor of stereo projection. Only Columbia fills every inch of a room with real, lifelike sound. Now, when I was bird watching with the Duchess of but let that pass. You simply must hear the Stereo One phonograph by Columbia. Ask your Columbia phonograph dealer for a demonstration. And, chaps, portables are priced as low as $39.95. Consoles commence at $129.95. Lost that bird. The fabulous Desmoulins Ranch was in the beautiful Rogue River country of Southern Oregon. I stopped when I saw the main house, caught by its majestic beauty as it rose from a hilltop, silently watching over its vast holdings. Many stories had been told about its owner, the Comtesse, stories of her strength, pride, and iron-fisted control. At the house, I was met by a servant and shown immediately to a huge bedroom furnished in the best French tradition. Propped up in a large poster bed was a very old woman, her eyes burning with fierce pride. This was the legendary Comtesse, frail and weak now in sickness, but still the ruler. So you did come, Mr. Paladin. Come closer so I can see you. Ah, yes. The report said you were a man of character. But I wasn't sure whether you'd come or not. My curiosity would allow me to do nothing else. Your curiosity? Or the money I offered you? Both. (laughs) Sit down, Mr. Paladin. Thank you. Perhaps you already know. 
Six months ago, my son died. I read about him. What you don't know is that my grandson, Andre, disappeared shortly afterward. Your grandson? He ran away. I haven't seen or heard from him since. Well, uh, how old is he, Contes? Twenty. Why did he run away? Andre was always given everything he wanted, no matter what it was. But in spite of this, the boy became sullen and resentful. He made friends with an undesirable person called Feslin, who succeeded in intensifying Andre's rebellion toward this ranch and everyone on it. And when he ran off, he went with this Feslin? Hmm? Yes. A black mark against the name of Desmoulin, a name that has for centuries been spoken with respect. And you want me to find Andre? I'm going to die soon, Mr. Paladin. And I want my grandson back before I do. He's my last living relative. And if he doesn't want to come back? You'll force him. This man, Feslin, keeps Andre from returning. He's evil. He only wants what my grandson can give him. Do you know where they might be now? Yes. Two weeks ago, my foreman was in the town of Plaza, three days' ride from here. There he saw Andre and Feslin. They were gambling. Well, why didn't he bring him back? Feslin is a gunfighter. My foreman is not. Mr. Paladin, if you bring my grandson back to me... I'll pay you not 2000 as I promised, but $5,000. 5000 Yes. Must mean a lot to you. It does. There. You'll find a picture of Andre on the dressing table. Take it. All right. Bring him to me, Mr. Paladin. Bring him to me. Countess, you'll have your grandson. Placer, Oregon, was a small mining town nestled in the mountains near the crystal clear water of Grave Creek. After searching the town for Andre de Moulin and Feslin, I learned that two men answering their descriptions had left a few days ago and headed south toward Grant's Pass. I followed, and on the second day picked up their trail. They were moving slow, and I figured I'd catch them the next day, so I made camp for that night. Don't move, mister. The uh, gun pointed right at your back. And don't turn around. Drop your gun belt. Well, now, you done just fine. Andy, come in here. <laughs> uh, you sure surprised him, Feslin. You surprised him real good. How about it, mister? Did I surprise you? Yeah, you sure did. Want to know why? Because I seen you following us. Why were you following us? What makes you think I was? Oh, you were right enough. What'd you do, see Andy and me winning all that money back in Placer and figure on taking it from us? You seem to have all the answers. Well, I'll tell you something, mister. I don't like nobody following me. I don't like it at all. You're going to die for it. You always shoot men in the back? No. Nobody can say that about Feslin, not ever. So you just turn around and get it in the belly. All right. Feslin! Don't move, Andy. There's still one bullet left in this derringer. You... you killed Feslin. He was only fooling you. He wasn't going to shoot. Boy, you don't know men like Feslin him. Feslin was my friend. Your friend. Who are you anyway? What were you following us Why for? Why did you but... shut up? I'll tell you. I'm going to take you back to your grandmother. Why? Why would you want to do that? She wants you home before she dies. Well, that old she-devil won't ever die. She hired you to get me, didn't she? Yes, and you're going back either peacefully or tied on your horse. Now, it's up to you. No. No, I'm not going back. You have no choice. Maybe not now. But the time will come. You'll have to watch me every second, mister, because I don't intend to ever see her again. The 
laugh's on you if you're not tuned into Comedy Time every weekday evening on CBS Radio. The laugh's on you because you're missing the funniest part of the day. That's when you hear the Amos and Andy Music Hall, peopled by Amos, Andy, the Kingfish, and all those other wonderful characters invented by Freeman Gosden and Charles Correll. These two witty gentlemen have been entertaining radio listeners for over 30 years, and they're funnier and more popular than ever. CBS Radio's Comedy Time is also time for Andy Griffith, droll star of the Broadway musical Destry Rides Again, and just as droll as a commentator on some of the crazy things you and I do every day. Also in on the fun are George Burns and Gracie Allen, the zaniest couple who ever went to the altar. And, of course, those wonderful satirists Bob and Ray, with their riotous interviews, contests, and clubs. But then probably the laughs on me. Maybe you haven't been missing CBS Radio's comedy time at all. Chances are you're already among the millions who've rallied to Comedy Time, Monday through Friday evenings on CBS Radio. We buried Andre's friend, Feslin, and for the next two days rode in uneventful silence. Andre was watching and waiting. On the second night out, we made camp late, and before bedding down, I tied him hand and foot. The mountain air was cold, so I left the campfire burning. After I went to sleep, Andre must have somehow wiggled over to the fire and burned off the ropes. I awoke just in time. Kill you, paladin! Oh, not with that club, boy. You're a fool, boy. You're a fool for trying that. I... I thought you were asleep. All right, now you tell me. You tell me, why are you so afraid of going back to the ranch? You... You don't know my grandmother. She's a devil, a witch. My father, he was just like her. But he's dead now, and I'm glad. That's a bad thing to say about your own father. Just let me tell you something, Paladin. My father was a tyrant. He used to tie people to a post and have them whipped when they disobeyed. I'd watch from the house, and then I'd hide because I was afraid he'd do it to me. Well, that's pretty hard to believe. There are laws here and people to enforce them. The only laws on that ranch are made by the Demolins, and I'm ashamed of the name. I wish I'd never been born with Your choice of friends doesn't speak very well of your judgment. Feslin was all right. He liked me. He taught me all kinds of things. He sure was good with a gun. Look where it got him. Well, that's because you tricked him. How was he supposed to know you had a Derringer hit on you? Doesn't it mean anything to you that he was going to shoot me in the back without a chance to defend myself? He wouldn't have done that. He was just scaring you. He wasn't scaring anybody, boy. He was going to kill. And I wish he had. I wish he'd shot you dead. You just bought yourself another rope. Hey, Paladin. Yeah. These are real high cliffs, aren't they? Uh-huh. It's a long drop to the bottom of the canyon. You better turn around and watch where you're going. Uh. Oh. Oh. Pa- Paladin, there's a mountain lion up there. <laughs> Andre. Andre, can you hear me? That's kind of like an answer to a prayer, Paladin. Only you didn't fall all the way down, just to the ledge. Yep. You'll have to help me up. Now, why would I ever do that? Look, Andre. Get the rope off my saddle, lower it to me, and... Wrap the other end around the saddle horn. Paladin, if I pull you up, will you still take me to the ranch? Yes, I will. And I gotta leave you. I'll die here, boy. I've got no choice. I told you, I'm not going back to that ranch. You'll be murdering a man just as sure as if you put a gun in his back and shot him. I'm sorry about that. Goodbye, Mr. Paladin.
constipation can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, as close to natural acting as possible, and a medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, Exlax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because chocolate at Exlax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. Exlax is gentle. Next morning, it gives you the closest thing to natural action. And that's why many doctors and millions of people use Exlax with complete confidence. Exlax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently, overnight. Is Exlax in your medicine cabinet? The ledge I had fallen onto was about 15 feet below the narrow, twisting trail and was impossible to climb. Below me was a sheer drop of 100 feet or more. I crouched on the ledge for what seemed like hours before I finally heard the sound of a horse coming up the trail. When it was near, I shouted and the sound stopped. A rope was lowered and I gratefully clambered to the top. What? Andre? I, I couldn't do it, Pallad, and I don't know why. I, I thought about it for a long time, but I just couldn't let anybody die like that. Well, you've done a good thing, boy. I think that's the first good thing I've ever done. Andre, why don't you want to go back to your grandmother? I told you why. Now, that's hardly reason enough, since she's going to die. I promised to bring you back to her. I know. I'll go with you. I'll tell you this. After you see her, if you still want to leave, I'll help you. Thanks. But I don't think you'll want to. Not then. I'm scared, Pallet, and I, I don't want to go in. Andre, she's an old woman. She wants to see you before she dies. But I don't want to see her. I tell you, you don't know her. She's mean, real mean. <laughs> her fierceness frightened you as a boy, but you're a grown man now, Andre. That isn't it. The, there's something I... I... What? Nothing. All right, quiet now. Come in. Hello, Countess. Paladin. You've done it. Yes, he's here. I'm so happy you found him, Mr. Paladin. So happy. Come here, Andre. Let me look at you. Well, go on, boy. No, no, don't! Paladin! Why? Stand still, Mr. Paladin! Stand very still! As you can see, I'm an excellent shot. Why? Why would you do a thing like this? You ask me why, you fool. Because he killed my son. He murdered his own father. He desecrated the name of Damerlan. Murdered his own father? Yes, yes, yes. But why? Because he was a weakling. A filthy little weakling. His father gave him a whipping, just a whipping. And he killed him. But the world will never know. The name of Damerlan will not be blackened. The name is already black, Countess. No one will ever know, Paladin. Because you... You two are going to die. You two are... <gasps> Paladin. Contest. It's my heart. Help me. Paladin. Help me. Sorry, Contest. Nobody can help you now. Yeah. 
Oh, 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 I'm so oh, sorry. Oh, Miss Wong. Oh, excuse me. My, but you're in a hurry. I, I go to meet Hayboy. Huh? Oh, oh. oh, well, now I'm glad that you two made up. Oh, yes, sir. After you told me it was only cousin Hayboy kiss, oh, Miss Wong was very embarrassed. Well, you didn't have to be. After all, Hayboy shouldn't go around kissing pretty girls, cousins or not. Oh, uh, Miss Paladin, Hayboy just tried to copy you. Oh, copy oh. me? Yes. <laughs> All right, Miss Wong. Now, you tell Hayboy when you see him that he has my permission to copy me as long as the pretty girl he kisses is you. Oh. <laughs> If you're smoking more today, but enjoying it less, try Camels. More people smoke Camels than any other cigarette, any filter, any king, any regular. The Camel blend of costly tobaccos has never been equal for rich flavor and easygoing mildness. The best tobacco makes the best smoke. Have a real cigarette. A real cigarette. A real cigarette. Have a Camel. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Sam Edwards, and Peggy Weber. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. <laughs> <laughs>